The potential collapse of First Republic Bank is another recent event that has shaken the U.S. banking sector. First Republic Bank was hit by the failure of Silicon Valley Bank, which was one of its major counterparties and creditors. SVB collapsed on Friday after it was unable to meet its obligations, due to massive losses from its exposure to crypto-related assets and frauds. As a result, First Republic Bank faced a liquidity crisis and had to tap into emergency funding from J.P. Morgan Chase and the Federal Reserve's backstop program for depositors. However, this did not calm the market's fears about First Republic Bank's solvency and stability, as its stock price plummeted by 60% on Monday. The bank also issued a statement on Sunday saying that its capital and liquidity positions were very strong and well above the regulatory threshold for well-capitalized banks, but this did not seem to reassure investors and clients. Many analysts have speculated that First Republic Bank might be the next bank to fail or be acquired by another institution. The history of First Republic Bank Corporation of Texas can be traced back to 1920, when it was founded as the Guarantee Bank and Trust Company by Eugene de Bogori, a University of Texas Law School alumnus. In 1922, it obtained a national charter and changed its name to Republic National Bank of Dallas. Over the years, it acquired several banks and invested in others, such as Interfirst Corporation and NCNB Corporation. It also changed its name several times, such as Republic Bank Corporation, First Republic Bank Corporation and finally First Republic Bank Corporation. The bank grew rapidly and became one of the largest banks in Texas and the nation by the 1980s. However, it also faced financial difficulties due to bad loans, oil price shocks and regulatory changes. In 1988, it became insolvent and was seized by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which sold most of its assets and liabilities to NCNB Corporation for $900 million. This was one of the largest bank failures in U.S. history at that time. The bank's name was revived in 1998 by a group of former executives who bought a small bank called First National Bank of Edinburgh and renamed it First Republic Bank. The new bank focused on serving customers in Texas with personal banking, business banking, and wealth management services. It also expanded its presence through organic growth and acquisitions of other banks. By 2020, it had over 80 branches across Texas with more than $10 billion in assets. However, its fate took a turn for the worse when it was hit by the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, which was one of its major counterparties and creditors. As explained earlier, SVB collapsed on Friday after it was unable to meet its obligations, due to massive losses from its exposure to crypto-related assets and frauds. As a result, First Republic Bank faced a liquidity crisis and had to tap into emergency funding from J.P. Morgan Chase and the Federal Reserve's backstop program for depositors. However, this did not calm the market's fears about First Republic Bank's solvency and stability, as its stock price plummeted by more than 60% on Monday. The bank also issued a statement on Sunday saying that its capital and liquidity positions were very strong and well above the regulatory threshold for well-capitalized banks, but this did not seem to reassure investors and clients. There is no direct evidence that First Republic Bank of Texas had a lot of losses because of crypto. However, it is possible that the bank was indirectly affected by the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, which had a heavy exposure to crypto-related assets and frauds. SVB was one of First Republic's major counterparties and creditors, meaning that they had financial transactions and obligations with each other. When SVB failed to meet its obligations due to massive losses from its crypto portfolio, it triggered a liquidity crisis for First Republic, which had to seek emergency funding from J.P. Morgan Chase and the Federal Reserve's backstop program for depositors. The market feared that First Republic might be the next bank to fail or be acquired by another institution. 
Other regional banks that had ties with SVB also suffered from its failure. For example, PacWest Bancorp dropped more than 35% and Signature Bank slid almost 23% on Friday. Signature Bank was especially vulnerable because it had a heavy exposure to the crypto industry as well. These banks also faced regulatory scrutiny and potential lawsuits from their clients who lost money due to SVB's collapse. The US government is trying to prevent more chaos in the financial system by investigating the causes and consequences of SVB's failure and providing liquidity support to other banks if needed. However, some analysts have warned that there might be more hidden risks in the banking sector due to crypto volatility and frauds more to come as this story is still breaking.